Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 76th week. Sweeney, clear the floor, Katie, bar the door, Molly, put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got another full house today, not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out the written show notes on my blog and search all of our podcasts. And now you can search almost all of our books uh, visually with a new little search service we've got there. That's still going on. And uh, we're getting ready to add uh, uh, about 14 podcasts. Uh, not podcasts, 14 visuals, 14 uh, videos. And they'll explain our books more about that in a second. But uh, it's just another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. And you can also phone 816-256-3360 to leave your comments. Your family search, your song, or your recitation on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Well, we get down to the day. I think we're, uh, we're in that summer rush again. And we're getting ready to leave for uh, Dublin, Ohio Festival just shortly here. So I'm going to have to... Uh, we got a special interview today. It's uh, the second interview with Patricia Hardy from Irish American Magazine. And uh, that first part was sure interesting, and the second part is too. It's a really interesting story. You get right down to it. We all, uh, we all have these experiences, and P Patricia sure got some nice ones. Um, the one thing I did want to talk about today at uh, what's happening at the cafe here, we just finished filming and producing, and uh, we put them up on YouTube, and they're going to go up on the webpage here uh, shortly. But uh, 14 uh, short videos, and they'll be interesting for several reasons. Uh, number one, I've got a video of myself in my uh, podcast setup here for all three podcast series. I've got a uh, video on the Irish Families Worldwide, which is this one, the Irish in America uh, broadcast, and the Irish Song and Recitation uh, broadcast. So you can see all three of those uh, broadcasts uh, just by, uh, right now you can go to YouTube. I'll have them all laid out on our page pretty soon. We're... We're sort of start, starting at irishroots.com university. Uh, this is getting to be a lot of fun. Uh, we also have, uh, I did several of those uh, uh, pod, uh, uh, videos on uh, certain books so you'd know what a certain book was and what it was like and if you might want to get it or you might not. Uh, I did a special one on the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, uh, the video. I did one on the Book of Irish Families. I did one on the Irish Families Project, which is that 34 book set and... Uh, that might help some of you understand what's in it. I try to give, give, give you an idea of what that whole thing was about. I also talk about the Plantation of Ireland and the Conquest of Ireland book, uh, especially for those folks up north or you folks want to know uh, where all these troubles might have come from in part. And I talk about on another uh, video, Coats of Arms and Tartans. And we all know there's no such thing as an Irish family tartan, just the Scots-Irish maybe, and the, and the Scots for sure. Uh, and then I have a little timeline of Irish books. I talk about Irish genealogy books going back several centuries and coming on down. And I give some hit, hints and tips on the spelling of Irish family names. And I've got uh, one on uh, Kansas City Irish and one on St. Louis Irish. So all in all, it's really, uh, it's really a pretty good little collection. And I hope it'll at least spark uh, the interest of most people. But like I say, we put it up for free on YouTube uh, just yesterday, so that should help, and we're going to incorporate it into the website as free videos uh, in the next week or two. I sure hope you sit down and enjoy that, or you could be standing up. I don't know. Uh, and we'll see you at the Dublin Irish Festival. If you're out there in Dublin, Ohio, that starts uh, uh, in a week or so, and I'm going to go out and uh, brush up on uh, my Boron lessons. That's the Irish drum. And then after that, I should get some singing lessons. I could learn how to sing. And then it get then some fiddle lessons. I got a fiddle, but I haven't learned how to fiddle yet, so that would only take about five years. I'm looking for some volunteers to teach me how to do all these things. Uh, oh, and we're also putting those. Oh, the other big news: we're also putting those videos together as a little free bonus on a brand new DVD we're coming out with on the best of the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, that's also got our very first travel video that was done. Uh, Oh, gosh, way back in uh, uh, 1984, 1987, somewhere around there. Uh, plus, it has uh, uh, 
a few other little special things on there I think you'll like. So be watching for that, the best of the Irish Roots Cafe video. And that, and that includes uh, uh, three, sh three chat and song uh, podcasts and three uh, Irish in America podcasts. And it also includes three podcasts on uh, the Irish families. Uh, uh, so I tell you, really, it's, it's a little bit of everything we do, and hopefully it'll help you out. And uh, gosh, it'd be a good present for somebody if you want to let them know what it's about or what they might do to uh, reach out for their Irish family roots. Plus, there's a couple of hours of listening or viewer time on it. It's really a double album. Uh, but now it's time we get back to Patricia Hardy, part two of the conversation, talking about favorite places in America. Patricia, you're on. Of course, any, any, any place I go, I'm looking for that little corner of Ireland, you know. Um, oh, that's and right. And there's, there's one everywhere, you know, in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, you have the statue of Robert Emmett, you know, or, you know, so wherever you go, there's always, um, there's always uh, a spot, you know. I love New Orleans. Sure. And, you know, that is a big Irish connection. So wherever I'm going, I'm always seeing it through in a way and or trying to connect up to the experience of, of the Irish who went before. And I think of them, you know, especially in New Orleans coming out because they got cheaper passage on the boats. And, and oh, That's right. A lot of them came up, came up from New Orleans up to Missouri and Kansas, came up the river. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, that, that, the riverways really were the pathways for the Irish. Uh, I wonder, you did a book or edited a book on uh, famous Irish Americans. What was that? Yeah, we did the Irish of the century. And is there a famous certain one in there that you uh, that just really hits you? Um, I always go for the. <laughs> I I really I love the writers and the artists. So um, you know, George O'Keefe. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, but. Uh, I love Eugene O'Neill, of course. I mean, there's an example of an Irish American who um, never set foot in Ireland. But you know, all you have to do is look at his work. Yeah. And and it's so Irish, and that's what he said. He said the things that the critics don't get about me is that I'm Irish. Yeah, yeah. So there's a prime example, you know, of an Irish American who who never went to Ireland, but you know, it's it, it's just in your blood. Um, Steinbeck, we we put him in there too because he had Irish ancestors, and uh, and he said that the Irish blood must be very thick because it doesn't water down very well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw you had Jimmy Cagney in there too, and he was a character from way back when. Oh, you know, he was a character. Yeah, he was. Somebody up there likes me, right? <laughs> <That's exactly> right. <laughs> was that uh, was that Jimmy Cagney, or was it his? his um, what was the name of that famous movie? Is it White Heat? Oh, God. Where he's like top of the world, mom, top of the world. Oh yeah, I saw saw so many of them. I can't keep them all separate. Yeah, and that uh, that uh, I remember interviewing Gregory Peck years ago. That was one of his favorite movies. And and there again, whoever thought of Gregory Peck as Irish? Yet he had that whole Irish grandmother, you know. That's right. And, um, uh, I talked to a fellow who knew uh, Father Flanagan of Boys Town. And he said Father Flanagan actually looked a lot like Gregory Peck as opposed to, uh, oh, the famous guy that played, uh, uh, that played him in the movie. Uh-huh. So I thought, well, that's interesting. And Gregory Peck's, uh, is it his daughter or granddaughter, just went back for, for some celebration in County Kerry, I think. Yeah, it's probably his daughter, Celia. She did a documentary on him. You know, he yeah. was just, uh, he passed away a few years ago, but... Um, He's just a wonderful man. Um, very, very, very bright, easygoing man. Very interested in his Irish uh, roots, and uh, he was actually related to Thomas Ashe, the the hunger uh, striker. You know, the yeah. mayor of of Cork. So he, um, it's been. I've had the most wonderful job <laughs> because one drop of Irish blood and I'm there, you know. So uh, I understand so. what you're saying. It's it's an amazing thing, and there's more coincidences coincidences than you could ever believe in it. But things just seem to happen for a reason. Uh, let's finish up with I was reading where uh, over in County Wexford they had a, a controversy over Muslim headscarves. And, and uh, where, being able to wear those in schools or not, and they took a little informal poll, and the, the population was about split on whether you should be able to or should not be able to wear them in school. Uh, have you heard any feedback on that? I didn't actually, but I'm sure I'm sure I will. 
Uh, yeah. The whole it's it's really interesting for me growing up in Ireland. Of course, when uh, during my time we all had to wear headscarves to church, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember the priest actually um, not too nicely telling me to to cover my uh, my head. We all wore those like mantillas or headscarves. Yes. So. Um, well, you know, it's interesting times in Ireland. When you look at, uh, you know, people say, oh, they're Irish, and I'm like 100% Irish. There's no such thing. I mean, yes. if, you look at, <laughs> That's right. if you look at, uh, you know, all the colonizations and, and everything, and, uh, you know, all to, down to, we're such a mixture. I went to a Scandinavian do, and, um, and and I walked in there and I felt like I'd found my people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I growing up, I'm I'm tall, I'm about five ten, ten and a half. But growing up in Ireland, I was like, you know, people would look at me, and <laughs> all my friends in school were all little little short girls, you know. And it was like, uh, so we've had the four hundred years of the Vikings, which people forget about, but we had all of those. And somehow, Ireland manages to absorb everybody. And at the end of the day, you know, as, as John Steinbeck says, the the blood must be very thick, you know, because it's somehow. And you see it here. It doesn't matter who the mix is. Somehow the Irish, the, that whole genetic code or whatever it is, you know. So that's why well, they said the Normans became more Irish than the Irish themselves. And exactly. That is sort of what happens. It makes uh, it makes sure does make a, a big family across the world. Now, if we could all get together on peace, maybe the Irish in all the different countries of the world could uh, use their talents. <laughs> Well, absolutely. I mean, it, isn't it really exciting to to think of this whole uh, conflict resolution, you know, aspect of of Northern Ireland, and how if you could if you could just take that and apply it to certain spots of the world, how how wonderful it would be. I mean, I'm involved with a, an Irish organization called Concern Worldwide, an Irish relief organization, which, in an essence, that is what they do. They they're involved in every troubled spot in the world and and they're the first whenever there's like a, an earthquake or whatever you know right so um you know but to, to take the even but to take the uh, the larger model of of um of what happened in northern ireland and and just to be able to to see I, it's my dream that somewhere along the border there you would have this uh, this conflict resolution building Oh boy! That would be built where you know people would be invited in from from all corners of the world, and you would take people on both sides of the divide in Northern Ireland. Just and I'm talking about community people at that level, meeting community people from from Palestine and Israel. Yes. You know, women meeting women, and and you know, um, and guerrilla fighters meeting with guerrilla fighters, and just because um, the most amazing thing thing to me during this whole peace process was uh, was Mutual of America, um, Tom Moran and Bill Flynn um, uh, opening up the forum. They have, they have this wonderful um, boardroom where they brought over um, speakers from every corner of, of, of that divide in Northern Ireland, you know, uh-huh. from politicians to community workers uh, to hardened, you know, men who had done time in, in, in prison and they just um we all sat around and we had lunch and we and we listened to them speak. And so it's and that's what George Mitchell did too for his years over there with all the talks. He just let them let them talk. Right. And people need to talk, you know? Mhm. And uh so God bless Irish America. Boy, that's a fact. I it's been great talking with you today. I hope sometime we run into each other somewhere along the road. Well, I'd love to. I mean, I'm, I just think it's fascinating what you're doing, and uh, I'd love to know more about how you got started. And uh, when did you actually start with the website? Oh, the website's probably uh, you know uh, ten or fifteen years ago, uh, real small. And uh, the books back in 1978, I wrote my first book on uh, on tracing Irish ancestors, and that was right after Roots had come out. Uh, you know, a few years after that. Mm-hmm. And it was just starting to build here, the formal, you know, where everybody started looking and then they started going to Ireland and the tourism just kept exploding. Uh, uh, but uh, one book led to another. And you know what? I've I've now done a at least a small guide to every single county in Ireland. 
and uh, uh, reprinted books like The Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. Uh, Fantastic. You know, done, I've done things that just just sort of seem to escape the ra- radar of the big uh, organizations, and I can come in and fill a little need, and uh, I tell you, it's just been fun, but it's hard to explain to people what uh, my uh, f- <laughs> how I make a living because there's no- <laughs> nobody else that does it quite like this. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and who, uh, what ancestors came over? Who were the first in your family to come over? Uh, the O'Loughlins came over from Kilfenor. Kilfenora County Clare, and then the, the Donahues from uh, Glen Flask County Kerry. Wow. And uh, they were two different kinds of Irishmen. You know, the O'Loughlin's were quieter and uh, very determined, sort of like living on those rocks in the burn did something to, mm-hmm. to make them determined but quiet. And the Donahues were debaters, and uh, uh, they must have fallen right in with Dan O'Connell. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a nice a nice blending, and I had at least one one grandmother who was a uh, of German f- extraction, a grab miller, and that sort of kept a little practicality in the family. I think. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And you went back to Ireland what year for the first time? Uh, seventy eight. Wow. Nineteen seventy eight, and nobody had ever been back in the family, and nobody mm-hmm. knew for sure where you know where we came from. And uh, so that was great. I, since then, I've, I've taken several of the family over, and I've led group tours over. And, uh, uh, of course, I can only do so much of that. I, uh, that's a lot of work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wa- watching after 20 or 40 people, I'm telling you. Right. <laughs> you don't have time to enjoy it yourself. Yeah, and they all want to go in different directions. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But, boy, that's what makes it fun. We always stayed in cottages at least half the time. Uh-huh. And I gave everybody a car, and they could go out on their own, or they could stay with the group, and uh, that way everybody got to do just what they wanted. So you've actually seen uh, great changes in Ireland then over the last, uh, you know, ten, fifteen years. Well, you know, it's it almost seems like the differences in America between 1920 and 19. Uh, 60, it, 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 the traffic jams, I saw for the stoplight go in in Limerick, mm. and I was amazed because there, there was a big backup outside of Limerick so many years ago, and I thought, what, if something bad must have happened, but no, they had just put in a traffic light, and uh, it, from then on, it just went crazy, <laughs> uh, building everywhere. I oh, know. And it, good, good for the Irish, but... Uh, it's not quite as nostalgic for the Americans now. I know. <laughs> I know. Back. My last trip home, I I, um, I had to drop somebody off in in uh, Ballin the Slow in, in County in County Galway, and and I was going up to Donegal, and and people were telling me, "Oh, take the new road, you know, take the new road. You'll be there in you know in two hours or whatever." And it's like I didn't want to take the. I didn't want to be there in two hours. <laughs> So I was driving along and I saw this uh, this by road and it said Ross Common, you know, and I was like, oh, and I swung a left and 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 it was like I was back in my in the Ireland that I grew up in. So they have actually left a lot of the old roads. Yeah, and I still um, like the places where you'll see two signs pointing opposite directions to the same place. <laughs> <laughs> That's just that you well, can't go wrong. Well, that's what we used to, when we were kids, you know, out in the country, we, we would, uh, I'm afraid to say we would switch those signs around. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have much else to do. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's there's a lot of things happening now, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, what can uh, what can you do? But um, as in the past, I think, you know, when, when uh, America preserved so many of our treasures, you know, Oh, I yeah. think that um, that the, the same the same is true of today. I mean, it's really interesting for us. We um, our next cover of the magazine is uh, Brenda McDonough, who is head of um, HSBC America, and here is this young Irish guy. I mean, who emigrated first to Asia and and at forty nine years old is heading up this big company and more and more we're finding with our business 100 and our wall street 50 and stuff that you have these young irish guys born in ireland who are on the fast track you know in, in corporate america so it's a whole different immigration pattern you know that's right oh and i saw uh boy i just make one last comment that the the list, list of the the richest people in northern ireland over half of them were catholic and i thought what? boy that's amazing 
That is amazing. And, and I thought, good gosh, that's a really good sign that uh, that things <laughs> that are breaking up. That is a good up. sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, you know, things are are not so great for everybody, and there's still that whole immigration problem. And uh, oh, that's right. It ta- it's going to take a while, but it's still it's the right direction. Yeah, and we're 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 really working hard with the uh, Irish lobby for immigration over here because uh, I think it's important to keep. I think the Irish are travel birds, and no matter how how uh, well they're doing at home, and of course they all don't do well. And uh, there's, there's such a connection between Ireland and America. I would hate to see the door closed. You know. Oh, that's right. That's right. I don't think that'll happen. There's quite a few out there now who are undocumented and can't travel. You know. And, oh and, uh, yeah, yeah. Kinda... It, there's always a way. The Irish have always been able to find little back doors to things, and. Uh... I think we'll still be able to do it. I sure hope so anyway. <laughs> hey, before we before we sign off, uh, how would people uh, get a hold of your magazine? The best way to uh, uh, see on the web and or subscribe to the magazine in, in hard copy? Well, if you want to subscribe in hard copy, and we still like people to pick it up and read it, um, you can call 1-800-582-6642. And uh, if you want to log on irishamerica.com, um, right now, that will take you to the Irish Abroad website, which we are we are part of. Right. The Irish Abroad and the Irish Voice. And, yeah, uh, I saw in there. Uh, I saw an article in there. Uh, it was on Irish Heritage. Uh, it actually uh, had referenced our my website, so I thought I think I'll check this out. And that's when I thought, Gosh, I ought to get a hold of this uh, Patricia and see uh, what she knows. It seems like she's an important person. <laughs> Well, I was just really delighted that you made the connection, and I hope we can keep the connection going because uh, sure. we're all family, you know. Hey, that's right. It's all uh, this whole Irish American thing, and, and the more the more of us, the more that we identify um, with each other and, and what we're doing, the stronger we are. That's exactly you right. Know? Yeah, a lot of a lot of people take the opposite view. They think everybody's a competitor, and they don't understand if you work together, you can pull a lot bigger load. Yes, you know, that's what I love about, uh, with the magazine, we do like several um, events every year. Now we do our top 100 Irish Americans and our business 100 and our Wall Street 50. And what I love is that, you know, cause the Irish aren't living in neighborhoods anymore so much, but it's like I love bringing people together and, and just watching the people sit around, a uh, group of people sitting around a table. And they all do that six degrees of separation thing, you know. Yeah. It's like they're all going, and it doesn't matter what part of the country they're from. It seems to me yeah. they'll find somebody That's that right. somebody went to school with, you know. <laughs> and I'm laughing. I'm looking at these Irish Americans, and I'm like, God, they remind me so much of my father. Wherever he went, like he would find that, uh, you know, that connection. That's right. Yeah, it, it's oh. it's just oh yeah, you know who you know somebody from a million miles away, and right. They, and they ended up doing a special project with your best friend two years ago. Yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's astounding, and sure makes life fun. And it's also a chance for us to bring together, you know, people from different walks of life, you know, and and some of the people who are doing philanthropic uh, or charitable work or whatever, and put them together with uh, people who maybe have the money to support that sort of thing, you know. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's important. Uh, can I tell you one little thing that happened out of, out of our top 100, which I'm just kind of thrilled about? Sure. We honored a, an Irish doctor, Dr. Kennedy from um, from Dublin, who was uh, he works here at the Hospital of Special Surgery, and he was doing some volunteer work. And he got together with another guy we were honoring, who was working, uh, he was doing stuff with the Wounded Warrior Project, and they got together and. Um, and because of the connection that they made at our event, Dr. Kennedy has gone on and he's been able to save several, like, I think five of, of soldiers from having oh. the, their legs amputated. Oh, good gosh. Because um, but that can happen out of um, Irish America, you know, and that old family kind of connection um, mm-hmm. that you do and that, that we do here. That's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, that's right. And, yeah, things bloom from that that you'd never dream of. Gotcha. Thank you. Right. Take care. Mm, talk to you later. Bye. Mm, bye. Thank you, Patricia. I appreciated that interview and found it a really interesting. I hope everybody else did, too. Uh, we're coming to the end of this now. i got to get packing, and i got to send that uh, DVD off to get processed. And, boy, this has really been a lot of fun. Remember to send your comments uh, by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com 
or send by mail to our American address at Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 or Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs> <laughs>